Hello and welcome to Radio Waves by Totterbert. If you enjoy reviews, comparisons, band scans of new and classic portable radios, then please subscribe and tap the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Yeah, I think I might need some lessons. <laughs> yeah. So in front of us we have the Panasonic R1014 AM portable radio. Pretty awesome. I purchased this radio for $20 shipped off of eBay. Paid a little too much for it probably, but it's a pretty cool classic and I'm kind of glad I got it. So let's go over to radio dimensions real quick. Two and a half inches wide, four and a quarter inches tall, and a depth of an inch and a quarter. So pretty pocket friendly. I really like the size. So let's go ahead and do size comparison. CC pocket. 103 a.m. in the morning, Central Standard Time. There we go. And then we got the Magnavox 39 a.m. radio. Give you an idea for size. This is my daily driver. I actually uh, use this one all the time. And I have one station to listen to during the day that I like. And so, yeah, you can see this big size difference. So I'm kind of glad to get this pants on because I really like how much smaller it is and more compact. And I like the front. So let's go over the features of the Panasonic. Left hand side, we got the volume. Okay, on off switch, we have the headphone jack. I saw it's kind of nice black. I like that treatment. The front of the radio, we got the name Panasonic, kind of like a chrome on black. And then we have this window. It's like a square dial. It's kind of cool looking. I like it. It's got a real thin indicator line, which I really like. So you can pinpoint that station ID. The dial seems fairly accurate. And uh, we have, uh, what does it say, 530 to probably 1610. Yeah, as average back then. Okay. Uh, front here, we got a two-inch speaker under this metal bezel. It's kind of like a, a piece of aluminum glued on to the plastic. Uh, it was peeling up on me on the bottom, so I had to hot glue this back down, which was no big deal. Uh, let's see, the right-hand side, we got the tuning wheel that you saw me moving. Real easy to move, a little bit of resistance, but not bad at all. I think it's direct tuning, so the tuning capacitor is you know, right on top, so the knob screwed right to it, which is nice. There is no string to break. That is really nice. I didn't do any work to this radio, did not require anything, so that's another nice thing. Another Panasonic that I did not have to really work on, just tried to spiff it up a little bit. Um, wasn't that dirty either. Uh, bottom of the radio, nothing. It got little little feet here, so it does stand up pretty nice. And the back of the radio, pointing to the tuning wheel and pointing to the volume wheel. Here we have a large vented area. Here we have the number R1014. Yeah, pointing to the earphone jack. It takes two AA batteries. Um, made in Taiwan. You know, I looked this radio up on Radio Museum, and I don't get it. Is that site any good? Because it said 1966. Dudes, this is not 1966. No way. This has got to be like late 70s, my guess. You know, it's got this, um, you know, more of a braided uh, deal strap. And you know, the earlier ones had the vinyl, you know, the heavy-duty vinyl stuff. So, yeah, I'm, I'm leaning towards more late 70s on this radio. So you guys can chime in. I did see different colors. Saw a white one, which looked pretty nice. I really want to get it. And then they have a red one, which looked pretty nice too. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to donate, <laughs> I'm all about the donations. Um, no, I'm just kidding. You don't have to donate. But if you want to, feel free. Contact me. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's go ahead and fire this. Oh yeah, it has. Oh, you can open this. Well, let's see if we can open this up on camera. Let's see. Push. Oh, wait, going the wrong way. So you push this way. Let's pop this open, get a good look on the inside. Everybody likes the insides, right? So there's the inside. We got the ferrite right bar, which, you know what? Since we got it open, let's measure this stuff out. Looks like it goes almost end to end in there. Looks like two and a quarter inches about. Yeah. A little tape there. I don't know why the tape's there for holding it, possibly. Uh, let's see, we got some transistors there. Looks like one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I'm thinking, was that five? Did I miss one? Might have missed one, but uh, yeah, it looks like five. So yeah, we got that, and then we got the uh, 
capacitors, which I didn't have to change, which is nice. You'll recognize uh, from my previous that uh, oscillator coil, um, your inductors here. We got three inductors to adjust. I didn't have to mess with those at all, so that's great. Um, so yeah, not bad looking radio. You got two AA batteries. They kind of stacked, staggered a little bit. So headphone jack. It looks like it's easy to work on. I didn't have to take it apart, but if I had to, it looks like it's pretty basic because um, this isn't attached, the headphone jack. And I see like one screw down in there. And it looks probably that's all you got to do and it comes out. So sweet deal. And you got serial number there. Kind of got the old school printed one. Yeah, you kind of see these in the uh, earlier 1059s and the uh, 1077s. So yeah, I'm wondering. I'm kind of wondering now about the date. But yeah, I don't think it's not that early. It's not 66. So I'm like, yeah, you guys are smoking something. <laughs> There's like no way it's that early of a thing. Okay, so we got that snap down. Let's go ahead and turn it on. I'm going to breeze through the AM band. It's nighttime. Central Standard Time, you saw that in my pocket, right? 108, P, or 108 AM in the morning, Central Standard Time near Chicago, Illinois. CC Pocket always comes in handy if we need to ID anything. I don't want to go too in-depth, but we'll see what we can find tonight. Let's see how sensitive it is. And I got something plugged in, I think. Oh yeah, that was a transformer. <laughs> That's pretty sensitive. Okay, so let's rock it out. So that sounds like 650. We'll just double check it real quick. Whoop, my pocket's jamming. Nope, maybe it's 630. 630, okay. The dial's reading. That's 650 WSM, Nashville, Tennessee, 434 miles. Very good players, not only the regular season, but the postseason. If you look at the last uh, few Super Bowls. Oh, yeah, one more thing that I did. Loving this. Uh, I like the Steelers. Uh, trading up. The sound. I love this aluminum panel. It's just, just cool. I love the smaller form factor. This is just a really cool classic to carry. I think we're getting like 690 on there. Let's just double check. Yeah, 690. So that's a really far station. That's uh, TSN Montreal, Quebec. 763 miles. Barely coming in. You know what, guys? We got the time. Let's see what a loop can do here. This is the magic of the loop. Turn again. There we go. I 
found out with the loop um, when you're in this uh, facing position and you have an analog radio like this and you bring it up to the middle like really makes a difference oh now it's yeah you can hear it, it gets a little louder but for me it was like night and day with some radios Jason position So, a lot of fun. Okay, put the loop back. I'll do that once in a while. Pull that out, it's nice. Let's see what the radio can do without it, though. Okay, just a little short break. Right back here in the saddle. Should be 700. Gary wants to talk some politics. Yep. 700 is WLW Cincinnati, Ohio, 300 miles. Woohoo! <laughs> Just curious if I get 710, but not tonight. <laughs> So you heard that was 7 CF ZM 740 Toronto. That's 460 miles. Sweet. <laughs> it's fun. And then Atlanta. Those who call them the fascists. He's like right here. So it can get it, but it's just barely again. Oh, we're bringing the loop back out. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Oh, sorry. Hello. <laughs> So to get it to work in this position, we gotta... There we go. So, that's 750. Not bad. Having that loop's really handy, and if you know how to use it, <laughs> remembering facing adjacent, which way the ferrite bar is running to the horizontal plane of the loop. <laughs> I'm still a rookie using that thing, but I love using it. It's just amazing. And as we have said, when it comes to... 70, 760 WGR, Detroit. 51. Denied clearance. Seasonably cold with the low of 32. 78 WBBM, Chicago. In 2008. Um, what am I getting here? 800. So, yeah. <laughs> this should be like a loop session, I guess. So yeah, they say that you know sometimes nighttime with all the stations there, and the radio not being super selective, that you might, you know, be amplifying a lot of different signals. And I am, but it is nice that I'm able to get some audible signals from some of these distant stations by using the loop. So yeah, I'm happy. Oh, I'm having that. That's a great investment. I'm gonna put a link down there for the loop again because it's just a great tool. Um, and I, of course, I have some videos, uh, tuner tips, and I'll put that up here. You guys can check that out. You know, if you guys haven't seen that video already, I'm sure most of you have, um, where I explain how to use, you know, the basics of using uh, 
different items to improve reception on your radios. So where am I at now? 8, 20, 30? I don't know where I'm at. Along well with folks, and, and that's uh, the spirit that she portrays in all of her characters, too. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, it, 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 so this is WCCO uh, Minneapolis. Uh, it, 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 300, it, 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 310 miles, I think. It's a, of, it's a story of the mother yeah. and a daughter. They're both alcoholics. So the dial is a little bit off there. I might have to recalibrate it. This is CJBC, uh, Toronto, 460 miles, and I'm usually, there we go. So this is 870 WWL New Orleans, 865 miles. So yeah, this is great. It's a good little radio. <laughs> 20 bucks well spent. I'm a happy camper. AM master. I love my AM radios. Especially Panasonic's. I'm going to have to adjust that. Definitely uh, adjust the oscillator. Get that uh, lined up. Like I said, I didn't touch anything. I think this is 890. I think this is 880. So this is WCBS New York City. 750 miles. Kind of coming in crappy. I got the loop in my help. I'm just gonna kind of cruise it up. It's gonna get real tight between 1200 and 1600. <laughs> you can see right there. He's done that for four years. It's be a mess of stations. This is 1000 a.m. See where we're at here. Oh, that's 1,000. KDK comes in pretty good most of the time. Uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 450 miles. WBZ is right next to it. I don't think I hear it. Oh, it's probably there. But yeah, it's there. It's just barely legible. So WBZ is 880 miles, Boston, Massachusetts. This should be uh, WHO, Des Moines, Iowa. Wow, it's amazing. Uh, Gina, really quick yep. before we get the break, did you have a question for James? No, people remain upbeat about their personal finances. Can I do a slight reprimand condition? Which we were asked to refer to as. Guessing this is 1100, even though it says 1200. Go 1120 WKMOX St. Louis WKMOX <laughs> KMOX That is true More acting work Fun 11:40 Uh, KYW, Philly. 
700 miles. I'm sorry. W W Y L L Chicago. Yeah, I misread that. It's 1160. Not the other. Not 1060. <laughs> it's the one in the morning deal, I think. So this is Rochester. It's kind of a rough night. It's 1200 a.m. Did it say Canadians? I'll have to check that out. 1200 a.m. in Canada. Okay. Check that out. I'm going really slow. A lot of stations up here. A difficulty tune. Let's see if this is uh, 15 something. Fourteen thirty. Yeah, I really need to calibrate this. <laughs> At least I know how to. Fifteen ten WLC, Nashville, Tennessee, four hundred and thirty four miles. I'm a center than any other household item. Um, fifteen thirty or fifteen forty. Uh, I have a better idea. Let's just call somebody. Fifteen thirty, uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, WCKY, three hundred miles. It's like uh, 1540 is actually difficult coming in with my CC pocket also. I used to get that uh, music station. Fifteen eighty. I don't have anything for fifteen eighty. I think I researched it and couldn't find it much. Okay, this is probably sixteen ten. Okay, that's our 1610. That's our CHHA Toronto, Ontario. So, yeah, that's where 1610 is at on the dial. I'm digging the square dial. It's cool. And it tops out there. So I'm wondering with my adjustments if I'll get past 1610. 
It'll be interesting to see because I'm definitely 16 times should be like right about there. And I'm wondering if I'll gain some more stations. I might. Okay, cool. We're done. Yeah, the Panasonic. Loving it. Uh, the R1014 AM portable radio. Um, is it a buy for a classic portable radio? Yeah, go out and get one. Um, there's like color, different colors. Um, like I said, mine's a little beat up, but I don't care. I like it. I like the little vintage use, you know, I don't, it doesn't need to be mint and I'm afraid to use it. <laughs> I want to use this sucker. So it's going to get some use. Um, two AA batteries, which makes it really easy. Um, happy with that. Cause I can put my rechargeables in there. Don't throw about fussing with a nine volt, which is nice. Uh, let's see. I like the brush plate. I like the square dial. Like you heard me saying a million times. I like a Panasonic on the black looks really good. Um, just, it's just a cool retro radio. I mean, it's, and it's really small size. I mean, I can't get over how small that is because yeah, here's my Magnavox. This is just an AM radio too. And yeah, it's okay, but it's a bit fat. <laughs> I mean, this radio is definitely slimmer. I'm just loving it. It's just a great, great radio. Um, so yeah, if you are into AM radio and you're into classic, and you're into vintage, uh, I think you've seen a lot of my reviews. I've done a lot of Panasonics because I'll be honest with you guys, every Panasonic I get works. <laughs> every one. Uh, every third Sony I get works. Um, every third realistic radio I get works. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I've had to send some back. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, so out of all these radios, even, yeah, Magnavox. Now Magnavox done okay, but I did have a, a clunker come in. Um, which is a bummer, but uh, Magnavox has been pretty good. Uh, but Panasonic, they just take the gold for retro radios that just continue to run. I mean, I just, I'm just, it's, it's go with it. If it's retro, it's a radio, and it says Panasonic on it, have no fear, just buy it. <laughs> so if you guys like the video, big thumbs up. If you like the radio, big thumbs up. You know, hit the like button because you guys like, like the Totterbird, you like the videos. <laughs> Um, if you're new, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, you guys heard that before, I'm sure. Uh, maybe I'm the dingling. <laughs> yeah, there's a song that goes with that, I think. I don't want to sing it, but you know how that goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know some people mentioned it. Um, and uh, comment below what you think about the Panasonic R1014. Yeah. Sweet little radio. Happy to own it. All right, guys. You saw the... Loop in action. Will I be doing loop sessions with these radios? Possibly. I'm going to try to exhaust the loop sessions with my new radios, and then I'll bring in the Panasonics and the old vintage radios and see how well they fare with that uh, loop antenna action going. So, all right, guys. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Take care, and goodbye.